Amen. Woo! Good morning, church. Good morning to those who are watching. I'm not sure which camera. I think that one. Good morning to all our um, online members. Who's glad they're at the house of the Lord this morning? Amen, amen. I would like to invite everyone who's outside to uh, come and find their seats already. Um, who's, who's exhausted? Because I, I know I am. I'm exhausted. Um, you know, every, every time I, every time I, every time I lead, um, not just lead, but every Sunday, <laughs> I always struggle to, to sleep on a Saturday night. So um, I would like to invite everyone who's at the back to start coming in, in here. Uh, we're about to start our service and um, let's, just, let's just wait for them. Those who are at the back, uh, we would love to invite you to start finding your seat as we start our service today. But um, yeah, I, I was, was, what, as I was saying a while ago, um, I always find myself nervous for some reason, especially when I'm leading worship. And you know, there's, there's this saying in, in, in Tagalog, it says there, Kabahan kapag hindi ka na kinakabahan. So it's not it's not a tongue twister. There, there's a meaning behind it. So in, in, in English is this. Get nervous if you're not nervous anymore. Oh. That means you're trusting in yourself. Not God. And so I've 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 I came to know Christ when I was sixteen and I've been leading worship since, but even today, even to this day, I I have jitters and because I know that I can't do it on my own. Because we, we, can't, we can't change lives. We, we can't save people. But we can point them to the one who's able. We can only do so much. But God, only God can do God things. So as we go on with, with our service today, shall we open with the word of prayer. God, thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us. As we gather today, we give up everything that we're holding on to. We give up everything in our hands and we let go. We give up everything in our hearts and let go in pursuit of you. And if you ask us, oh God, even when it's hard, we will give everyone that we know in pursuit of you. Because you are all that we want. God, we empty ourselves today with any distraction. We empty ourselves today with anything that would hinder us from worshiping and praising you, we settle our spirits and we fix our eyes on you. With 100%, 110% of our strength, we will pursue you and seek your will today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand up and... um. We haven't done this in a while. I think because of, you know, there's something happened in the past two to three years that was didn't allow us to do this. But I would like us to, as, as the band plays our, our welcoming song, let's go around and welcome, say hi, shake hands, fist bump if you don't want to. But say hi to your brothers and sisters in Christ. If you, we haven't done this in a while. If you if you don't if you don't if you haven't recognized your brothers and sisters in a while, go ahead and as as we play the song, go around, get out of your seat, and let's welcome one another. Amen. Amen. Go around. Rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We 
Get up on your seats. Our God. Say hi to one another. Forever our hope, our strong deliverer. Miss Payne, you are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not fade, you to our screens for our announcements.
morning, everyone. Welcome to SPA. Thank you for spending your day with us. If you're new here, go grab a welcome packet in the back. It's right there at the usher's table, and we'd love to connect with you and your family. Here at SPA, we want to build a relationship with you. So visit us at spachurch.churchtrack.com. In there, you'll find our announcements, ongoing events, send a prayer request, give online, check out our live groups, and so much more. Again, that's spachurch.churchtrack.com. So here's what's happening in the month of June! June birthday celebrants, it is your time for you to be wished a happy birthday and we're having that on June 11. Men's Ministry, 8 a.m. Sanctuary, June 17. For all the fathers out there, our Father's Day is happening on June 18 at 8.30 a.m. We will be serving breakfast. Make sure to RSVP on our website or app at spachurch.churchtrack.com and make sure you arrive in Hawaiian attire. See you there! For those of you in a relationship, Couples Ministry, 7 p.m. on June 23, here at the Sanctuary. Once again, thank you for joining us for Sunday service today. So get your hearts ready, sing out loud, and we'll see you around. Amen, amen. Wow, wow, wow. Can you imagine it? We're already halfway through the year. June already, right? I'm so excited for our coming Father's Day. If you haven't done so, um, please register in our website at um, spachurch.churchtrack.com. And as, as the announcement said, we're going to be serving breakfast. So if you haven't done so, please register in our website, spachurch.churchtrack.com. Amen? That is our announcement for today. And as we prepare our hearts to to worship God, let me just read uh, a scripture to you in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. It says there, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Amen? The faithful love of the Lord never ends. We can take hold of that word today that his love never ends amen let's all stand up as we, as, as we praise and worship god today may may we be reminded of his love may we be reminded that his love never ends that his love never fails amen amen, amen. amen. let's praise him today never fails, oh God. We worship you today.
He reigns forever. He reigns forever. Oh, that's why we can run to Him today. No matter what burdens you're carrying, no matter the struggles you have, you can run to Him today. No matter what sin or temptation or addictions you're going through today, you can run to Him. No matter what hurt you're going through, you can run to Him today. Thank you. 
changes I'm standing on your faithfulness On your faithfulness We need you, Lord You heard your children children now you are the same God you are the same God you answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same God amen you are the same God you were providing them you are providing now you are the this is what we believe today. You move in power then. God move in power now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were a healer then. You are a healer. Yes, Lord. You are the same God. Yes. You are the same. Say mm-hmm. 
those who are hurting, come and fill me again. Those who are broken, come and fill me again. Those who are lost, come on and say, come and fill me again. Those who are in need, say, come and fill me Those who have been praying for answers, sing it with me. Come and fill me again. Oh, we need your touch. Come and fill me again. We need you. We need your touch. Only you can satisfy. The same God of yesterday is the same God today. The same God of forever. Your promises are true. Your promises are true. Although we need you, oh God, we need your touch. We can run to you, oh God, in times of trouble. We can run to you, O Lord, in times of pain. We can run to you, O God. When things seem not going in our way, we can run to you, O God, when everything seems falling apart. Because you said in your word, O Lord, heaven and earth will pass, but you will remain. You stand alone. Your word will come to pass. So we put our trust in you. We put our hope in you. The same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the judges and all the prophets and the apostles, is the same God that we cry out to today. That's why we can worship. That's why we can sing. Because we know, oh God, that your goodness is true to this day. And you are faithful up to this day. We worship you, oh God, in this place. We honor you, oh Lord, with these songs, with our voices, with our lives. We lift you up, O God. The song is true, O Lord. We need you. We need you. We need you. Only you, O God. All the glory, all the honor, we carefully give to you. Our Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Let me pray real quick for our tithes and offerings as I before I welcome our pastor. God, thank you. For you are a good God. Praise the Lord. And you provide everything that we need. So, Lord, we pray, uh, God, for our tithes and offerings. We pray, Lord, that you use it, O God, for the advancement of your kingdom. Not just here on this church, O Lord, but for the missions and missionaries that we're supporting outside. And we also pray, O God, for our building funds, O God, that we're raising this year. We believe, O God, that we are not meant to for this place. That, Lord, you, you're planning something greater for this church. And so, Lord, we pray for our building funds as well. And so, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't you greet one another next to you? God is so good. 
I love you in the love of the Lord. Do it by faith. Okay. Man, what a beautiful song. What a beautiful worship that we had today. God is so good. I could worship all, all morning just being in the Holy of Holies, just basking in the presence of God. And many of us don't have that time or we don't make time during the week to just be in the presence of God and worship Him. Let's see. But when you can, you would experience just the power of being in the Holy Presence. But that's why we have this Sunday that we can all come together and just relax in His holy place and worship with the brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen? It's here that like the father in a family, he desires his family to be, to be the, on a table, to commune together, the joy of being together. This is where God really wants us to be, to rest in the presence of God, the whole family, and to just uh, bless him. And it takes faith to come here on Sundays. Because some people here are tired. Some people here have so, so many things to do that they can't do on the weekdays. There's just so many distractions and so many other priorities that, that can take precedence over coming. But when you come here by faith, it's the same type of faith that when you come to God in your time of need. If you have that faith to come to God in time of need for healing, for provision, then let that be your faith to come here and worship God. Amen? Because it's not just me that's going to minister to you. The worship and praise is going to minister to you. The word that God has prepared through the speaker is going to minister to you. The testimonies, the altar calls, and the fellowship of the believers after the service. Not going immediately home but just praying and communing together. All of these things will add to God blessing you and strengthening you for the seven days, for the next seven days of the week. Amen? Amen. Amen. We welcome our beautiful guests, and they, they were brought to me. We welcome my dear sister Rosie, coming from Hawaii. Yes, she, she attends our life groups on Tuesdays online, and now praise the Lord, we are real. Welcome to our humble abode, Sister Rosie. This is always your church when you come to California, okay? Hallelujah. For Matt, I see you. Thank you for coming, brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. That you responded to someone's persistence. Amen. To the Holy Spirit's persistence. And uh, Lou, are you there? Thank you again. I'm sorry if I do not, uh, if someone came in and I, I, I haven't mentioned your name, but again, we thank you for being in our presence. Amen. Every first Sunday of the month is Communion Sunday, so we have this. Okay, if you're not, if you don't know about this and you're not, and you're not aware of uh, Communion, then you don't have to participate. Don't feel guilty, no condemnation. You will always want to do something that you understand doing, not just following the crowd, okay? But if you have your element here, why don't you open it up now? Because we're going to have our communion. It's only done one Sunday of the month. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and read from 1 Corinthians um, chapter 11, verse 23. Okay. This is Apostle Paul talking to the Christians in Corinth. And uh, he's just, um, again, re reminding us of what Jesus has done. And that this thing, that this event that Jesus has done must be remembered through all the generations. Okay? It says here, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. Okay? The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. Okay? So let's take this bread right now. Uh, I know it's kind of difficult for some of you who have arthritis. Okay? 
but we will be praying for you. So I want to do this now because I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Okay. okay. The Lord on the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Okay. Now, this bread usually should be, we should have a loaf of bread being passed around and we we'll just take that, a piece of, from that loaf of bread because we are all united as one. We are united because of Jesus Christ who lives in us, that we are now part of God's family through Christ Jesus. All right? So when we take this bread, it's saying that we are part of Jesus. All of us are brothers and sisters. More than that, more than just brothers, blood brothers, will be brothers and sisters for all eternity. That we have one goal. We have been bought by a very expensive price, the blood of Christ. So when we take this, we're saying, God, I am yours. I belong to your body. I am one with everyone here. Let's take this bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Just to let you know that this covenant is an agreement. It's a promise that we have with Christ, that if we believe in Jesus and receive him in our hearts as Lord and Savior, that the blood that was poured on that cross will wash away our sins. There is no forgiveness of sin unless God washes it. It's none of our following the Ten Commandments or doing good things or being benevolent or being kind. There's nothing that we can do to be saved, to be forgiven. Only through the blood of Jesus Christ can we be saved. And in the New Testament, we are saved by the blood of Christ, not the Ten Commandments, not of our good works, but the blood of Christ. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's take this now. We have been washed by the blood of Christ. Let's partake of this blood, this juice symbolizing the blood of Christ. Now in your own word, whisper it, thank God that Jesus died for you. Whisper, thank Jesus, for he has washed away your sins, that he has made you part of his body, and that we are now partakers of heaven, that we are heirs to his kingdom, but that we have also one mission in this world that is so great, to fulfill the calling of sharing the good news declaring that Jesus will be coming back the second time to change the world. Thank God that you are saved. Thank God that you have Christ now as your Lord and Savior, that we are not alone, that we can now face the world through Jesus Christ, that the Father or that God Almighty is our Father. Thank you for the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. And I've always wanted to talk to you about the current issues uh, that's going around in the world, particularly here in the States. The current issues of society, it's, I've just been holding back because of so many other things that I, need, I wanted to talk about. But, and I did mention, I think probably three weeks ago, that one day I'm going to be talking about you know, um, same-sex marriage. And these are very powerful, very controversial, highly debated issues, even in a church. I'm going to talk about transgender and... All that. But I was holding back because it was going to be difficult. I procrastinated until I started sharing the word, just do it. And that kind of convicted me. 
And then after that, I follow that up with, um, don't waste time. So now I, I can't, I have to preach on something. Don't waste time. And then what was the other one? Um, huh? Don't waste time. And uh, there's another one that I said. Walk the talk. Okay? So now I'm going to... I'm going to talk the walk. I went this week to a conference of all the many, many pastors, majority from Calvary Chapel. And the topic was on the attack of our children. The attack of our children in our schools. If you go to any um, school board, you will probably, you will hear many of the things, many of the bills and codes that are now uh, inculcated in our in our schools and unless we take the time to research what are they you, they will not tell you because it's so controversial it would create a, a chaos but they've mentioned it to me and I'm not going to share it today because that's not my topic but it now challenged me that I must now begin to talk about the issues that we're facing today and because it's my fault if you are not able to respond to these issues that are being talked about in online in the in the media among your peers in your workplace among your cousins your friends your relatives everyone in the street they're already leaning towards the worldly philosophy and if we if i do not educate or at least share to you the the the, the perspective the christian not the Christian, the biblical worldview. Because if I say Christian worldview, there are many, even the Christians already have a different ideas. Many Christians around our Christian community are having different ideas. I want to say biblical worldview on these issues. So now I have to step by faith and talk about them. Sometimes it's scary to have it online because then someone can watch. And the scary part is that you know if they don't like what we hear they might just go ahead and tell the government and there we go persecution will start that's probably what's held me back not talking about it because we have online <laughs> but now some of these issues i might want to go through to go deeper with the q and a i might just go ahead and do some of these issues on Zoom, so that if you're interested, we'll probably put on the bulletin in our church program, our Zoom link for 6 o'clock p.m. We're going to be talking about this issue. And then that more, it will be more contained so that those who are in church will be able to join in rather than having to expose this to the world. But I will be sensitive of how the Holy Spirit wants me to do that. But it is now time for me to talk about social issues. Okay, and if my message today might not finish today, I'll, I'll, I'll continue it tomorrow, next week. My topic today is this. It's not on transgender. I will deal with that. But the biblical perspective of woke. You heard that word before, woke? Yep. The woke ideology, ideology. Nowadays, the media frequently discusses the concept of woke that's just a natural thing that everyone has received and is, is accepting. Now, while it is very essential that we talk about the, the social injustices that's happening around uh, in our country, in our country, and the responsibilities that we must take concerning these social injustices, we need to understand how the Christians should respond to this and not how the world responds to it. Okay? We must consider how to respond to this ideology from a biblical perspective. Okay? Now, uh, I know that after this message, there will probably be questions that you might ask. That's why it's nice to have to address this with a Q&A, with a discussion, rather than me talking to you, and then you just kind of like receiving it but there'll come a time when i'll open a discussion where we could talk about it more question what is woke what does woke mean the term woke is commonly used but um 
many people don't understand it. Some Christians don't, many Christians don't understand it because when they hear woke, they kind of shy away. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to listen to that. I, 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 I'm not interested. But we need to understand this. Webster Dictionary defines woke as someone who is aware of social injustices, particularly racism. As Christians, we need to be, uh, we need to be aware of these social injustices. Okay, we're not ignorant. We are not taking for granted. Okay, but we will respond to it in a different light, in a different way. The woke mentality that's being shared lures, and this is my perspective, lures many people, even Christians, to a feel-good thinking of responding to these issues. It's a feel-good instead of really going into Scripture of what the Scripture has to say. With the feel-good attitude, now we respond in kind. We respond in a in a human way, in a in a in, in, in a humanist, humanistic way. Through our feelings, we do this. We do a rally. We, we 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 defy those who go against injustice in a very militant way, in so many different ways. But we need to look. We need to respond to this in a a a, a biblical way. You know, it's like. Um, Woke can be very tantalizing, could be very attractive. It could be like that of an, of if you imagine like a buffet. In a buffet, you see, you see all the salads, you see all the protein, all the meat, you see the ice cream. And you know, the kids, when they go in, all they see, all, immediately they go to the ice cream, right? They go to the jello. They, they don't go to the, the salad bar, they don't go to the protein where the meat are, they go immediately to the sweets, to the dessert right away. In many cases, wokeism re response is like that. You immediately dive into the injustice, but not really seeing what God has to say with this injustice, how God would want you to respond to it. You know, I'm saying this, but how many have really opened the Bible when they heard about people talking about woke? What does the Bible say? And it's so attractive how the world will respond to woke. But there is a silent majority out there that is really responding to it in a different way. You probably heard of the Target, right? Target. Two weeks ago, they already uh, put a line of clothes for transgender, even promoting it for kids, little bathing suits. That's talks about, you know, that, that, that uh, uplifts and promotes uh, the transgender uh, agenda. Even, even, even Satanism, Target uh, um, promotes that, Satanism. There are clothes that says, you know, um, what was that? Um, Satan respects pronouns. Yeah. <laughs> Satan respects pronouns. So what do you mean by that? See? And there's so many other things that I, I, I wouldn't be able to remember. Well, there's at least a conservative majority. In the first week of that, they've lost, what, $9 billion? More than two. In about two weeks, they're now losing about $12 billion. See? You know, it's, it's not enough to just not buy or not support a company that used to just think of capitalism rather than campaigning on ideology, but now all, many of the companies are now, it's not about capitalism or just raising money, but now they want to promote a certain ideology. And when you do that, then you're now, you're, you're, not, you're now moving from that of selling your clothes to now trying to um, spread a... a a lie or a, a, a new view that would change the generation. 
and people will respond, but you got to speak out why. You got to speak out why you don't, you don't support those things. Okay? Wokeism encourages us to entertain worldly philosophies and dismiss the reality of sin, the reality of the Word of God, the reality of the Holy Spirit, the reality of God. Wokeism causes you to focus on the worldly philosophies that is the, the, the grassroots, the foundation of wokeism is worldly philosophies. Okay? It's in this wokeism that now you'll see it will spread out to, to the other teachings, other issues of like that of uh, critical race theory, CRT. It's from that wokeism that now you're talking about that you, 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 you see a lot of um, transgender ideology. It's from this wokeism that you also see the teachings of Black Lives Matters, BLM. Now, I'm really walking on very, very sensitive ground. Because I know some of you here may be inclined to these things I'm mentioning. But I don't want to talk about what I think. I want to talk about what the Bible says. Okay. You deal with what the Bible says. I'm just going to share to you what the Bible says about these things. And it's up to you to think about where you're going to... If you can find other scriptures to, pr to support it, then show it to me. But the Bible is what God is going to use and not your feelings to bring accountability to what you believe and what you have promoted and have taught to your children or have, or have supported. It's going to be a scary situation when you face God. There are many philosophies, worldly philosophies that support wokeism, where wokeism is derived. And there are many founding fathers in the area of philosophy that you can address, that you can mention. But there are three figures that I want to talk to. They're, all of them are going to be very familiar to you. Three figures, okay? And they are, number one, Karl Marx. You've heard of him, right? Second, Friedrich Nietzsche. Okay, Friedrich Nietzsche. Not Nietzsche, it's Nietzsche. And Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud. There are other philosophers, but I want to just address this issue. All right? The, these names. You got to be vigilant, okay, of not becoming complacent with the worldly, with these, with these um, humanistic ideologies. Where they came from, for sure they did not come from the Bible. They come from worldly philosophers. And that we need to know what the Bible has to say so that we can respond correctly and be able to nurture or teach our children when they ask us, especially our high school children, our college children, who are really wrestling with these, 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 these philosophies of the world. And are being canceled when they are, if they don't support these ideologies. We are in this cancel court culture wherein if you don't believe us, we will cancel you. We will cancel your business. We will cancel your church. We will cancel anything. We will put it in media. We will put it in, in, in the news. We will put everything. We will cancel until you are bankrupt. Because you don't follow the, the, the public opinion. And the public opinion now is not the morality, but what we feel is morality. We are 
in a relative world where in what we think today may change tomorrow but if tomorrow we change that then it's relative we will keep progressing until if our the whole generation changes and we will change our moral values to that to to that generation we are relative we are progressive and if you don't follow and you're just an old fashioned um uh, old fashioned um bigot who's unwilling to change then you're left behind we cancel you you don't belong to our world you don't belong to our generation you don't belong to influence our children in the schools you leave us because we are progressing and changing there is no absolute am i is it clear are you familiar with the words I'm saying? Cancel, progressive, relative. They're all together. Karl Marx, an atheist with a disdain for God, relentlessly aimed to dismantle the foundations of Christianity. He saw the world as a dichotomy, a, a, a division of only the oppressed and the oppressor. Only two types of people, the oppressed and the oppressor. Thus, he was led to create, to write this communist manifesto. Have you heard that? Wrote this communist manifesto, which focuses on analyzing the struggle and the exploitation of the, of the poor. And this communist manifesto is focused on destroying capitalism. Because it wants to raise the oppressed and destroy the oppressor, the rich, and the middle class. And to do that is to make everything even. The government takes control so that he can just even out. Oh, you're not going to be rich anymore. This is what we're going to give you. You who are poor, we're going to give you this. Everything is equal. But then we become gods. we got to remove God from the picture. We are your gods. We will provide for you. There will be no one who will be hungry anymore. No one who will be driving a flashy car. Everyone will be driving the same car. All right. Marxism argues that the working class is exploited by the capitalist class and advocates and advocates for the eventual overthrow of capitalism to establish a classless society. Have you heard of that, classless society? In the, in the world of the Antichrist, it will be classless money, a cashless money. It will be a cashless society. Everyone will be equal. Okay? Here's a scripture for that now. Say, when are you going to talk about what, is this scripture, Pastor? Well, here we go. Don't worry. I will share it to your scripture. The scripture does not directly deal with the word Marxism, but it does provide guidance on how believers should approach uh, a society that's promulgated by these worldly philosophies. In Romans 12, verse 2, it says this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? Then you will be able to test okay, and approve what God's will is. His good and pleasing and perfect will. This verse encourages us, all of us, to approach society issues with discernment through a renewed mind that we are to discern and analyze these things through a renewed mind. What does a renewed mind mean? It is a mind transformed by the Word of God. It is a mind filled with God's truth. It is a mind that is being led by the Holy Spirit. It is a mind that is all about glorifying God and understanding the plans of God of this world. It is a mind that is about 
being changed daily into the image of God, when that is that type of mind you have, then you will become more critical of what you're listening to, what, what, what they're take, talking about. Because any worldly philosophy is all about the world, not about God. The worldly philosophy and all the worldly philosophers is all about me, that I am the God. I create the world. I create my future. I I, I, I. Not iPhone, okay? <laughs> you see? And the renewed mind is all about God. Seeking God's will. Navigating the complexities of the social issues through the Word of God. Through a transformed, renewed mind. A renewed mind is about looking at Scripture. What does God has to say? about it there you go romans 12 verse 2 do not be conformed to the pattern of this world to what the world is moving on every generation but is transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve god's will then you will be able to know if that is a good philosophy if that's a good view of life or not okay it encourages us to approach society issues with a renewed mind See, wokeism has its roots on this. Karl Marx, the founders of BLM, teaches Marxism. Okay. And if you don't understand these things, you're still asleep, they say. You gotta wake up. We gotta focus. You gotta remove this, this rich people, low people. We gotta remove it. We gotta be all evened out. We gotta change things around. Number two is this Friedrich Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche is a 19th century German philosopher, began. His teaching is about life is all about power. He believes that God is a dead and concludes that life is all about power. The strong would survive and the weak would not. Okay. He challenges prevailing notions of morality, questioning the existence of objective truth. He questions this existence of objective truth and exploits the dynamics of power and dominance. It's about be strong and the weak will just fade away. Weak will fade away. That's why you can see the very militant attitude of those that are focusing on, on, on these current issues. They're very militant. They're very dominating. They're very strong. And rather than saying, oh, we, you guys are intolerant, they're the ones who are intolerant because they take it to a whole different level by canceling you out if you don't agree with them. Is that, in, is that tolerance? No. Okay. There is some truth of the woke ideology about social issues and injustice but it must be responded through the word of god and even then it will never come to being because the bible says that it's when god comes and recreates the world that now he will bring this paradise he will bring this equality he will bring this this beautiful world where where sin has not destroyed it because of the sin that came in adam in eve's time all of these things the world and how god perfectly made it has 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 been destroyed it's like a cancer being eaten up and someday God has to come and totally eradicate remove that cancer, remove the fallen world um, impact and recreate it like that of again at, uh, th like that of Garden of Eden but it will be done in God's time, God's way, the second coming, not on we can only do so much, we can only alleviate so much 
injustice and, 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 and poverty, but we cannot bring it to its full fruition until God does come and changes all that. Philippians 2 verse 3 and 4 says, Do, not, do nothing out of selfish ambition and vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. You see? It's not being power. It's not the power must be elevated and all the weak will just die away. They will just fade away. No. But the Bible talks about that we must reach out to the poor. We must... Our interest is about touching the lives of others. Not that we sell everything, but that what we have, we help touch lives. Not that we sell our homes and then live like them, but that what, what we have, we reach out and touch others. Not trying to be, oh, too bad. I'm going to separate myself from you guys. I'm going to live on the top of the hill. You guys live there. You know, I'm going to go to a different store. You just stay in your store. You know, just no, no. You don't separate yourself. You you reach out, love your neighbor, be that Samaritan. Amen. I want to go faster now. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to do it faster. I'm just. Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, an Austrian neurologist and the founder of the psychoanalysis, proposed a theory that attributes to sexuality. His writings plays a role in the, philosoph in the philosophical shift towards postmodernism. Lots of transgender ideology comes from this. Freud. Studies how power works, works in families and society and how people deal with authority. I, wanna, I don't want to go too deep into this because this can also be debatable. Many, not all, these three are not, are, are not all their teachings completely. It's just that some of the, the, the ideologies today are, are, come from the residue of these teachings. There are many more philosophers that have impacted the new ideologies. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. This verse encourages believers to place their trust in God and seek His guidance rather than relying solely on human understanding. Put your trust in the Lord. And He will guide you into how to respond to the pains and sufferings of this world. You know, these patterns have affected many of the very impressionable people in the 19, 1960s. And now, the many of the people of the 1960s, they are now the, 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 they are now the, the, the professors of, of the universities. They are now the, 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 the heads of big companies. They are now in the media. They are, they are holding positions of, of, of power and, and, and places of influence that now they are teaching many of these things that these three philosophers have, have, have taught. So the result is this, that instead of a mere concept, a concept that we could study on, all these concepts of these philosophers have now been used to now change the character and the belief of the society. It's not just studying this. Hmm, interesting what Freud said. Interesting what, what, what um, Nietzsche said. Interesting. But now, no, we're going to talk, bring all of them and try to recreate a new society that uses, that, that applies all these things. But, you know, to do that, the Bible will have to be eradicated because there's no use for the Bible when we try to teach these ideologies coming from these philosophers. There is no connection between the Bible and all of these things. It's apples and oranges. What do we do about our culture? Well, each of us need to adopt a biblical God-centric worldview. God-centric worldview. Colossians 2 verse 8 and 9 says this. 
8 and 9. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is at the head over every power and authority. See, while the compassionate heart, while we have this compassionate heart, we must measure everything to the Word of God. We must measure all of these philosophies to the Word of God. Now here is the biblical worldview. Just very quickly, our identity. What's the worldview of our identity? Well, in Galatians 4, 7, it says this. So you are no longer slaves, but God's child. And since you are His child, God has made you also. So you are now, an, what's your identity? God's child, not yourself. You have been bought a price. No, I am not, I am not the original um, Noel. Now I have been bought. I live for Christ. I try to show the image of Christ. And if it's, you're going to see me, you're going to see more of Jesus through me. Thoughts. What's your worldview of thoughts? 2 Corinthians 10.5 We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought that make it obedient to Christ. Our thoughts is all about Christ. Our thoughts is about promoting the, 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 the truth of God. Our thought is about trying to capture this world for Christ. As long as we have the chance. Because this world is going to go to an end. And the world and the people will go to either heaven or hell. We need to have that type of thinking that we are here as an ambassador. We are here only for a moment to witness and share that the coming eternal life and eternal damnation. Amen? Have I confused you? The truth, a biblical view of truth. John 8, 31, 32. If you hold my teaching, you are really my disciple. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Your truth is the word of God. Your truth is God. Amen. Amen. Not things of this world. Not what your father said. Not what your husband says. Not with what your professor says. Your truth, children, is the truth of God. Young people. Amen. Amen. Feelings of feelings, they'll try to capture you. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately weak. Do not decide. Do not make a choice on feelings. Do not jump in because, oh, I feel, I feel that they need to be supported. Man, before you do that, cap captivate your thoughts. Surrender it to Christ. What does the Bible say? Not your feelings. And lastly, living. Worldview about your living. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. I, have no lo I no longer live, but Christ lives what? In me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself. Man, when that is your focus, you will live a more simpler life. But a life given to touching lives. It doesn't have to be someone out there. The homeless is probably someone in your home. Someone in your family. Someone in, your, in church. Reach out. If you can do that, then of course, when God brings you further from your home, from your church, you will see in the streets people that are hurting, that need if you can't reach out, if you can't reach the people around you, how more that you can reach the people in the streets? That's hypocrisy. Okay. I'm watching that time, you know. All right. I'm trying to. I, I, I meant this to be a classroom setting because it's all reading. But, uh, okay, I could preach this message. If woke culture tells us something other than, than following the Bible, run away from it. We must keep returning to the Bible as our primary source of truth. 2 Timothy 3, 16-17 says this. All scripture is God's 
breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The verse emphasizes the Bible serves as your comprehensive guide to life and comprehensive guide to seeing what is right and wrong, knowing what to hold on to, knowing what to let go, knowing what to really support. It's when you disconnect from the Bible that you are more willing to receive what the media says. But with the Word of God and with this type of fellowship, you are now more sensitive and more aware and more more critical to what the world is telling you. God loves those who are poor. God has an answer to those who are uh, who are dealing with racist, racism, social injustice, and inequality. But he will do it his way, and he will do it through through the church. The church is powerful enough to be able to impact society if the church jumps into the political arena and be a part of the solution. Go to the social, to the school board and talk about, hey, I am not happy with what you guys are putting, teaching my children. If you get involved and not just stay in church, then the world will have to find a way to answer to these issues in their own way. But when we church get involved in prayer and somehow just go beyond our reservation, go beyond our discomfort, go beyond our inabilities, and just go by faith and, and talk and pray and serve, then it will. T- we can't affect all the starfish in the beach. But you know, have you heard that before? That there are so many starfishes in the beach. And then this one kid got a starfish and he threw it back into the water. And the old man says, young man, young man, there are many starfishes in, the, in, in, in this beach. How can you affect all of them? And then the, old, the, young, the young guy said to the old man, but then, but I affected the one I threw. I, I, I've, I've, I've touched the one I threw back to the ocean. I may not be able to touch everything, but... I may have touched someone that will someday be a Billy Graham, someone who will be a president, who will be, who will be such an influence in the community, and then he will look back at this Christian who has touched his life, and he will be the one who's going to influence so many people. But you have to do your part. You have to do your part. Amen. Don't be quiet. Do it. We're not going to live here long. Some of us will be going, do your part. Before you cross the finish line, you can look back and say, I did my part. I threw that starfish. I spoke up. I did not live for the world. I live for you, Christ. I am an ambassador, and I'm going back home. But I've done something to light, to light my space with Christ. Amen? Amen? Respond to the needs of that woke, but don't answer it in their kind. And don't speak it in their own philosophy. Speak it through Christ. God's good? All the time. Okay, let's pray. Father, I love you. (laughs) We love you so much. All the worship songs talks about that you are great, that you love us. We have no fear to run to you. May it be now with this attack of philosophy in our lives, upon our neighbors, upon our children, we hold the truth. May we not be crippled by the fear of man, but Lord God, move by our reverence of you. That if we don't speak out, who will? If we don't share the light, how will they come out of the darkness and see the light? If we don't speak, how will they know the truth that comes from you? All they know is relative truth and the truth of the world. Lord, embolden us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Embolden us, convict us, move us, Lord, steer our hearts, revive us, not just to be prayer warriors, but to go ref- move forward, to walk the talk, to walk our prayers, 
to be the vessel that you wanted us to be, to be the channel. We thank you, God. We thank you. If some of you here don't have Christ as your relation, as your Lord and Savior, you just, let's just, you talk to Him, but there is no relationship. The way you talk to your father, your mother, there's no assurance that if you die, you're immediately transported to heaven. You need that. If you want that, that relationship that is so beautiful with Christ, follow this prayer after me. Follow this prayer after me. And pray with all sincerity. Don't be in a hurry. Don't look at anyone. It's you and God. Follow this prayer. Dear Father, forgive me of all my sins. I am sorry. I believe that you died on the cross for me, Jesus. Come into my life now. And be my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Holy Spirit, mold me to be like you. Touch my life that I may serve you well. And I lay before you all my concerns, my future my suffering, my family. I will serve you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now in your seats, lay hands on any part of your body that's sick. Because I truly believe that God is doing my powerful things, powerful healing Last Friday, just as your eyes are closed, last Friday we are worshiping. And I was praying for the sick people. My, my son, Hiskaya, told her, his aunt, Aunt Anne, Auntie, I already see Jesus walking around. He's laying hands. He's putting his hands on everyone that's sick. So even my son already saw Jesus in the vision of Jesus walking around the church that Friday night, touching everyone who was sick. So right now I'm believing that he's doing the same thing today. So lay your hands upon the, your body. Let us pray for you right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for that body. If it has cancer, remove that cancer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Clear that body of cancer. Remove it, Lord. Free her, him, of this cancer. Lord, every sickness in the body, every tumor, remove it, Lord, in your precious name. By your stripes, Lord God, we are proclaiming healing upon the eyes of any problem, glaucoma, cataract, heart of hypertension, diabetes, of any, and any sickness, Lord God, in the blood. Lord, in Jesus' name, clean it with thine blood. Father, we pray, Father, for deliverance, healing upon everyone here. Everyone who is feeling pain, wherever it may be, back pain, hallelujah, shoulder pain, knee pain, in the legs, in the feet, gout, in Jesus' name, remove it now, God. Hallelujah, in your power. And thank you, Father, that you receive the glory and the praise for all this healing that's being done right now. Thank you. And for those who are oppressed, those who are depressed, those who are dis in despair, those who are going through some fearful times, that who are anxious and are crippled by worry, Lord, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Lord, replace it now with your love and peace. Replace it now with hope and joy. Lord, strengthen their faith to stand on your word and wait for your timing. You have heard their answers. Father, may they leave this place now knowing that you are in their hearts. You have taken, are taking care of them. Thank you. Thank you for setting them free from all these negative emotions. And may the joy of the Lord be upon you all. May God's peace and treasures flow in your life as you hold close to him all this week. We thank you, God, as we give back the glory to you. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. Okay, there's going to be an activity after this, so we're going to have to...
uh, let it go with our brother. Go ahead and announce. Praise the Lord. What activity are we supposed to be doing? No? Well, because I had another, another thing, the reason why I came up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to allow Jethro a, a few minutes to, or a few moments to cue it up. But, gotcha. All right. It, I didn't know about it because it's a surprise for the, for the father. So, yeah, we're good. Uh, okay, cool. Um, you know, we, even though we're working on the side over there in the back, uh, our, our tech team listens to pastor's message. And when he... When he pre uh, prefaced his, his sermon today with regards to how it was a burden in his heart to share, start sharing about issues, we took cue and we established this button right here in our church track. If you have any questions, uh, it's a Q&A button, basically. If you have any questions about a particular topic that, that both pastors have said in any Sunday, it could be any message, because I understand, you know, sometimes uh, as you're listening, you have things that are stirring in your heart. Like if you really care about a, a topic, you try your best to listen. But there's also that chance of like the Holy Spirit is like, see, this is what you need to say. And sometimes you're not ready, right? Um, in first, uh, first Peter chapter 3, verse 15, what's that, what's that famous verse say? Always be ready to give an answer for the hope that you have, Right? And, and sometimes we forget that. We got to be ready. We got to do our parts. We got to, we got to prepare. And if you need help in preparation to give that answer, we have pastors on staff. We have leaders on staff that would be so glad to, to, to share that knowledge if you have any questions or struggles. And like I said, uh, this is a, a perfect time to plug our, our church track. Uh, not very many people are signed up for Father's Day, and so I want to make a, an extra uh, reminder that Father's Day is coming up, and you can use, use Church Track to register an RSVP. But going back to that, uh, the topic of, of questions and answers, this is really important, and I, and I want to share what, what, what I learned when, when, I, when I was reading an apologetics um, book. We're here, we're not here to win debates. We're here to win souls. So you have to have that distinction. You have to have that motivation because all of this is for naught if you're, if you're just going to try to win debates. We're here to win souls. That's why there's a right way in, in, in tackling these issues. And I'm so glad that we as a church are, are going in and, and, and not being afraid to touch these topics, right? Um, these are really good. You know, you know what else would be really good? teaching our kids about some of the topics that they're already hearing at their schools, whether it be uh, relationships and all that. Those are things that we as a church need to teach our, our congregation, right? It's to no surprise if they're going to learn that stuff from their friends or from somewhere else if we don't take the time to do it, right? So I think this is really important. If you have any questions, sharpen, sharpen your tools, right? Sharpen the iron. Yes. No, it's going straight to Brother June's email, and he doesn't know about it yet, <laughs> until now. <laughs> but let's, that, let's just keep that as our secret. Brother June doesn't know it yet, but it will be going to him. We would add Pastor's email there, too, but Pastor hasn't registered to Church Track yet, so... <laughs> uh, that's our little secret as well. Um, but... Thank you, thank you. I, you know, I'm so glad that, that we are going through this, this, this moving on. I'm, I'm so excited because we need to be the church out there, right? Amen. Let's go.